Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I noticed. I, I don't think I'm going to talk real long this Sunday, but I want to talk about uh, what's going on with the stock market and what's going on with the markets. You know what they've proved to us this week, this last week, you know? Uh, the stock market started to roll over first. It's like 600 points down. And then it come back up again, way up higher than ever. And then it went down a little bit toward the end of the week, you know. Uh, you know what they've proved us by all this? Is, is that the Fed can support the markets if they dump enough money into the system. <laughs> and they've also proved to us that they are going to support these markets. And the markets know this, no matter what happens. So to the markets now, they don't care. They don't care if a giant hole were to open up on the other side of the earth and start to swallow the earth up. Just as long as the Fed pumps more money into the markets because the earth's opening up on the other side of the world and swallowing the earth. They would just, they would just keep pumping more money in. The Fed would just pump more money in and the markets would go up higher. If they're getting free money, why not invest it in the stock market? It's free money. If they're going to dump a trillion dollars in, a billion dollars a day in, and whatever they're going to dump in, well, the market's just going to keep going up regardless of what's going on anywhere on the earth. But, now, what if the Fed stops? Well, they also the alternative of that is true, too. If the Fed even gives a hint that they're going to stop directly pumping money into the system now at this point, We'll see the biggest crash in the history of the world. So the Fed can't stop. So so basically, I guess what I'm telling you guys is, for a long time I talked about the great print. And in my mind, it was something that was going to happen in the future. I saw it coming. Like I said, you guys, the great print's coming. It's like ahead. I'm always thinking ahead. I'm always thinking, when's it going to come? Well, it seems like it's already started, and it started, and I didn't even see it coming. It's already here. <laughs> the great print's already here. Uh, gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies gonna, is, is, and commodities in general are going to respond to this great print. Not just gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies, but these are the commodities we end up buying. You know, us the common guys end up buying. But also other commodities like corn, wheat, soybeans... Uh, any, all the commodities, commodities are going to be the place to be because commodities are all real. They're tangible. They're, they're we need them. They're the things that they're the nuts or the bolts that, that run the system. You know, and if the Fed's pumping out unlimited amounts of money, and they're caught in a trap now where they can't back out, they got to continue with this great print. So the great print's already started. It started while I was asleep. Well, I wasn't asleep, but when I wasn't watching, it snuck in underneath. You know, it's... it's. I'll tell you guys a little story. There's a, a place not far from where I live where they have the highest and lowest tides in the world, and there's these long tidal flats and stuff. You know? And people walk way out on these tidal flats and stuff, and they do fishing and things like that, you know? Many a person has walked way out on the tide flats. And the waters come in behind them when they did, and they were watching for it too. But the water snuck up on them. It snuck up in behind them when they didn't see it coming. And, and they got trapped. You know, by the tide. Because it kind of come around. Maybe they were on a sandbar way out there and they couldn't see the water coming in from around behind them and cutting them off. You know, with the tide. Uh, quite seriously, one of the places where the highest and lowest tides in the world. I remember as, as a kid, I used to walk out there, you know. And the tide would come in so fast that you could walk at a walking speed. And the tide would be like following you, behind you, at a walking speed. The tide would be coming in at walking speed. 
You know, that's how quick the tide can come in in these places. But it sneaks up on you, and this is what this is like. It kind of like it snuck up on me. I didn't see the great print coming. I was talking about it's going to come. Always me thinking it's going to come in the future, going to come in the future, and it snuck up on me. We're in the great print right now. It, it started when with the repo market. It started when the Fed changed monetary policy. That's when it really started. And now the Fed's trapped. They can't not back out of this or they'll get the market crash of, of worse than 1929. They got to keep pumping that money in and in ever greater amounts. And the more crisis it occurs, and by the way, you know, this, this whole thing with, with the Chinese virus and stuff, this is an unparalleled crisis in the making because the Chinese economy, now by the way, guys, you know, all the people, the Chinese, their holiday ends tomorrow, and they all got to go back to work. I'm sure that they that they don't want to catch this virus, and I'm sure they all got to go back to work, though. And that means that, you know, you saw these pictures of the streets in these big cities in Beijing and Wuhan and all these big cities over in China, you know. They must stay at home not to catch it. But now they got to go back to work. So what will happen? I don't know. Uh, I do know that uh, this, is, uh, this is a terrible situation in the world right now. We're going to have to see what happens with all this. But the damage has already been done. The Chinese economy is sinking. And sinking fast. When, when this next quarter comes in, I hate to see what the GDP numbers are. But, you know, this is just going to effectively make the force the Fed's hand to print even more in order to keep the market up. They're going to keep making more and more new monetary units They're, until they bring us into some sort of a hyperinflation situation or a hyperinflationary scenario. So this is the time to get into commodities in the simplest e and easiest way for most of us common ordinary people is gold silver and crypto now crypto is risky as simple as that it can drop it can drop like a stone and you can lose a lot of money with crypto uh, gold and silver I I don't see them as being as risky uh, much less so you know, especially if you hold the physical gold and silver. So, I mean, these these are the ways we can get out of the dollar because they're going to keep hyperinflating the dollar until it's worthless. Uh, cash is trash. <laughs> well, not quite yet, but soon it will be. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, this has kind of been your Sunday report of what's going on. And we'll see you guys again uh, Monday, probably Monday or, or well, I'll be, I'll be here. I'll be reporting uh, all the way through the t entire crisis and beyond. Thank you guys, uh, and we'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.